railway map. So that could be a Dorchester and this could be no place in this game. Correct map of Cornwall, Scilly Islands. One of his paints for drawing maps. Benjamin Parker, every ski house today, to the Western Isles, Scotland, and maybe Todd Day kind of Isles. Cornwall. April 28th, midnight. The journey from today was painless and dull. Already I miss the scent of heather and prickle of gorse. Gorge? That looks like gorse. This Cornish landscape can never compare, being soft and rounded like the limbs of a newborn. Wow, that's a. Uh... Okay, comparison. Scotland's western isles offered me so much more. The landscape fallen like a corpse out land. I will return to Toddy once my work here is done. That can never be too soon. Work. This is not work, just another humiliation. The academy punishes me for my dreams. 
Perhaps my father's behind this new trial. I smell his envious mind at work. This coastline has been mapped several times over. Why would they send me here? I feel like this writing is much more emotional. than like, oh yeah, to do pop, pop. Reading so unemotional. As a qualified cartographer of the Royal Academy, I am not prepared to devote my life to such a superfluous commission. I have already viewed the maps of this area and studied them during my journey. From one corner of Bridge Isles to the other, the train window arrived only the most scant view of our fair land that was a little of interest to me. My arrival at Plymouth was prompt, and under the cover of darkness I was co collected by a salty fellow by the name of Speavy. I did not expect a fanfare, but a pony and a fish cart as a transport was surprisingly basic. I am sure the gentleman who commissioned my presence here would not travel in such a fashion. I suspect it was intended as an hour insult, so I went to great pains to hide my feelings. Perhaps when I meet with this man tomorrow, I shall learn whether he meant to insult me. What was his name? I have a letter here somewhere. Ah yes, a Mr. Robert de Marion. He is the local doctor and I believe he is highly regarded in these parts. I only know he this from Spivy, my travelling companion from Plymouth. So, I cannot take such information at face value. I shall take a brief stroll to the harbour wall before returning to bed. Oh, the strangest thing, a blink in the dark. I was standing on the harbour wall, staring out to sea, and there it was, the most distant light shining out into the gloom. A lighthouse. Most definitely a lighthouse. This is most strange. Why? Well, my friend, because there is no such lighthouse listed in the maps. Huh. Perhaps my work here is not as worthless as I suspected. I shall inquire about the lighthouse tomorrow. I have finished unpacking my case and equipment. This hut barely four walls and the roof is not displeasing to the eye, but is in need of some care and attention. I just hope the room holds for the duration of my stay. A note was waiting for me on the bed. It seems Mr. Demiron would like me to join him for breakfast in the morning. That could be the most interesting meeting. Until then I shall sleep. The journey has exhausted my mind. Outside I can hear the lapping of clear Cornish waters around the harbour walls. It allows me to sleep. It's nice a drawing, I guess. April 29th, down. Damn and blast, the dreaded seagulls shattered my sleep. I had the dream again. On this occasion there was more to be seen and learned, but my dream state was interrupted by these favorite things. Rats with wings. I do remember some details, but I wish for more. The stars, so bright this time, were alive, hurtling across the galaxies with the most unnatural force. I am no astronomer, but I recognized a few of the constellations. Darkness shattered by a great ball of flame. A meteor? A comet? No, it had a strange shape, like a metal container. Or barrel. What the devil is it? Why does it haunt my dreams? Perhaps one day I will know. So, now in the story of this game, and actually, kind of, it's ending. That's a very peculiar information to read. Mm. 
I saw something else too, a lighthouse. My observation of the last evening could have prompted this new vision, but there was so little detail. I have checked the existing maps again, and there is no mention of a lighthouse off this coast. I find this fact more suspicious. I shall dress and prepare for the day. Mr. Demarin expects me in three hours. This provides a little time for me to sketch. I shall set up my easel on the harbour front and enjoy the best part of the day. My new employer cannot deny me this opportunity. It looks to be a bright spring day. The woodland birds are singing and the sea is calm. It is time for my mind to explore and enjoy the town of Trevarfen. April 29th, 7 o'clock. With the sun now set in the sky and my painting complete, I shall return to my bed and let my mind rest until evening time. Breakfast was an interesting occasion. The house of my commission is right next to this hut. It is called Ruben Cottage. Interesting, I think Nigel has a family. Oh, surname of Ruben. Oh no, no, not Nigel. Another person in the fourth game. Or was it third? Lost ground. Mr. Demarin is not without intelligence, and he and I enjoy a game of chess, accompanied by rather fine brandy. He is both a writer and a man of science. In fact, he has a few journals and guidebooks to his name. And Demarin, I think, is prominent too. I had no previous interest in the flora and fauna of this area, but the, his enthusiasm coaxed some genuine vicina f vicination. fascination. I took the opportunity to ask him while in good spirits about the lighthouse I saw from the harbour. A most unhealthy look passed across his face. It was most unnerving to witness. You would believe a fellow have heard of the death of a close friend or loved one, so strong was the reaction. I did not hide my concern, but the Myron insisted the brandy was disagreeing with his stomach ulcer. I did not believe a word of it. So I pressed the man again and asked the name of the lighthouse in question. He immediately rose from his chair, spilling his brandy on the table, and began to proceed towards the front door. How extraordinary, but I was under the impression that he would have left me all alone without any reason for his departure. Finally at the door, he turned and said a few words. Stay here, make yourself at home. I will return by nightfall. Hmm, interesting, I can't see the paintings again. Oh, I can. This unexpected event presented an opportunity to explore his home. It was all rather dull, except, and this is what I find strangest of all, there appeared to be much more to this man than meets the eye. Many of his notes and private correspondence was left laying around his living room. I am not a man to pry, but it seemed ought to be so lax with one's prior dealings. Okay. Ah, oh, I lied to you. I did have a good poke around his kitchen. It was fascinating. Ha! Huh. I wonder what secrets in lies this gentleman is hiding. Anyway, I must talk about the work. My suspicious was unfounded. I do have honest work to do. The existing maps of this coastline are dangerously inaccurate with many ships and vessels being lost to the shifting deep side sands. This natural formation of silt and sand is in constant motion and cannot be mapped accurately. For now it is time to sleep. Perhaps my dream will continue. I hope so. Before I rest, I must mention something I witnessed today. The Marin has been collecting pebbles, shells and other detritus from the seashore. 
Some would, some of it is mounted in his home while our items are being studied. It was one of these items that I wish to mention. A stone, smooth pebble effect, was underneath a magnifying glass. When I looked at its clothing, it shone. This was no natural luminescence. It was, well, artificial. For some strange reason, I believe this event has connections to my dream. Something is not quite right here in Tevafran. Now, I must sleep. Something under that old rock. They call it fetch for a reason. There. Muscles, crop, pilchards, wrinkles, mackerel, cold bream, scallops, cockles. Oh, I think it's that's Peavy. Yeah, for trade. Come closer so that I can see. No. Thank you. Who goes there? Come, come in, Parker. I have a job for you. A job of the utmost urgency. Will you accept it? I am glad of your assistance, Parker. There is a most pressing matter that needs our joint attention. I have not been entirely honest with you with regards to the island known as Fetch Rock. You were right to suspect there is a lighthouse based out at sea, but I could not tell you of it. A mild deception. There is often bad talk of the lighthouse in this town. I did not wish for you to encounter the superstitious nature of some of the townspeople. They could be most unpleasant when Fetch Rock enters conversation. Some believe the island to be cursed or even haunted. Even I now suspect there is more to that island than meets the eye. Tell me more, you have piqued my interest. The lighthouse was built by myself and men from the town back in 1890 to prevent the loss of life on the Whipside Sands. Over these last 22 years, that lighthouse has claimed more lives and caused more misery than can possibly be imagined by an untroubled man such as yourself. You can trust me to keep an open mind. I fear that tonight has brought the worst news of all. A ship, the Reboss, 
pass by Fetch Rock this very night and observed that the lamp of the lighthouse was not lit. No sign of life nor light was visible from the vessel. The fog is thick tonight and carries an unnatural chill. The lighthouse keepers would never allow such misadventure as to not warn the passing ships. Who mans this mysterious lighthouse? Oliver Drake, James Wolfe, and Robert Shaw are currently employed to man the lighthouse. All three men are of sound mind and spirit. You must travel to the lighthouse. A small boat has been prepared. You will need a few items from your cottage, which I'm sure will be of use. Search around for them. Once you have them, you will be able to board the vessel and set off on your voyage. Hidden? Why the mystery? You get me wrong, young Parker. I only wish to keep our mission secret. There are those in these town who suspect the worst. They must not know of this latest development. Keep to the shadows and let no one interrupt your business. Now go. The fate of three men may be in your hands. That was quite an up close conversation. So again, I need something to take. I'm free to go. <laughs> uh, so, so I need to do something, am I? Hidden items, stuff. What am I supposed to do? I think I said something about hidden items or whatever. Bring James out. <coughs> yep. Bring Michelle. Maps. What's the point? Those sands are always changing. There's something under that old rock. <coughs> He's not the one stuck out there. Be grave, my James. Be grave.
Why? What should I give her? This is the most obscure beginning I had in the whole quite a war time. Maybe I need to use a lantern on the board. Record. This is a little disturbing. Wait, what? Oh my gosh, I should... That's really confusing and obscure, really. Devon Chef Farge Barrow Farm, Devon Devon. 
The fisherman's arms is arrived with gossip. The man chatted like a woman folk in this town. Whatever is the world coming to? Then of course there is the nature of their Prito Prato. The island. This will never do. I must put a stop to the speculation. The fools know nothing of events and fallen out. There the fetch rock. The latest item in a square card like object is made from the most curious material. It can bend but not break, it can be cut or scratched with the most blunt of instruments. It is remarkable, I have seen similar substances made from tree sap and molten materials. Resin? But never this smooth, or so black. There is a small silver metal disc placed in the back, which turns when a coin is inserted into it. <laughs> On the front, the words hardened industries can be read quite clearly. Remarkably. Remarkable. I have searched the business directories and can find no mention of this company. Their title is quite grand, yet I can find no mention. I shall search the archives in my next visit to London. Hmm, Hudden Industries. They may have the answer to the happenings at the rock. At last, I have a lead. Some cheese. I remember that place. I'll see it later. At the fisherman's arms. Yeah, I think it's Cornwall where I will get some point. In the lost ground.
Pasty recipe 2 in um, 1 8 cups of all purpose flour, 1 fourth teaspoon salt, 1 teaspoon baking powder, half cup butter, diced half cup water, and 1 quarter pound rump roast, cubed 1 onion, chopped 2 potatoes, peeled and diced 2 small carrots, salt and pepper to taste 2 tablespoon milk. In a small saucepan, cover carrots with water. Small saucepan. Bring water to a boil and cook until tend, about 10 minutes. Let cool and slice, sift flour, salt and baking powder together in a bowl. Add butter and rub to the consistency of coarse crumbs. Mix in water. If dough is sticky, add more flour. Roll dough out until about quarter inch thick. Cut out six circles, about each about five inches around. Do not stretch the dough. Mix meat and vegetables together and salt and pepper to taste. Cover half of each pasty base with a filling. Moisten pastry edges. Fold pastry over filling. Press edges together with a fork. Transfer our pastas to a baking sheet, brush tops with milk and make a small slit in each top to allow steam out. Bake in the hottest section of the agar for 10 minutes and then in the lower section for 35 minutes or until the pasta is hot and golden. Yay, recipes! <laughs> Mr. Demarion, as instructed, I have gathered additional supplies for the week. I trust you guests arrived arrive safely and enjoyed the sup I prepared. I will turn at 4 o'clock to bake some pastas and begin the evening meal. May I presume that there will be two of you dining this evening. I was able to secure some fine bacon from Jones the butchers and will be collecting a fine fan dumpling this very afternoon. Should there be any special requirements, I pray you guessed is not one of those heathen vegetablarians. I would need to know upon arrival. That's that's another command on vegetarians. First one was in the first game by Betty. Mrs. Agnew. P.S. I must also thank you for the kind words you offered young Beatrice. She has been terribly worried about James. Out there on that frightful lighthouse, and I do believe you put your mind at rest. For that, I must thank you, kind sir. Okay, we have bad news about that. Now, oh, cream teas. A cream tea is an indulgent version of tea. It is a treat that is popular with tourists as it is with Britons themselves. The gentility of the events comes from the fine china and the ceremony of the tea pouring. The indulgence comes from the delicacies that go with them. To accompany their pot of tea, diners eat scones, clotted cream, and ideally homemade strawberry jam. The scone, pronounced con, is a traditional form of baked bun with a sweet and crumbly texture halfway between bread and cake. Diners split their scones scone, horizontally, then spread each half with generous helping of jam and clotted cream. Clotted cream is a specialty in the southwest of England. The Countess of Devon and Cornwall, they vie with each other over who makes the best and over how to dress a scone. Devonians put the jam on top of the cream. In Cornwall, they put the cream on top of the jam. <laughs> I might eat it one day. Right, am I finished here? Let's check this again. Oh, there is a top. 
Uh, it's just cheese and bottles. Okay, maybe I just need to find that floppy disk. Okay, am I ready? There's something under that old rock. They call it fetch for a reason. A reason. Let's 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 go for let's go out. Let's do something. Uh, uh. It's really as obscure as I don't know what. No, 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 no. I don't want to get back. It's book mechanic is very weird. Okay, I took the floppy disk and haven't read further. I like moved my mouse about here and haven't seen this sign. I have discovered the small cavern at the base of outer steps leading up to the hide house. The summer sea winds carried large waves inland, and the sandbanks were washed away. This is how I discovered my find. I have yet to venture into the gaping gash, as I had no suitable lighting on my person. I do. A lantern. I was also wary that Drake, Wolf and Shaw may see me from the tower. I could see movement inside the crew room and did not wish to be discovered. Where could this tunnel lead? It triggers me so. The tunnel was dark and led into a fetch rock for me a few meters. It was at this point that I discovered a rockfall prevents further exploration. Damnation! So near, but so far. I honestly believe that the tunnel held the answer to my questions. I will have to discover an alternative source of inquiry. I turned to the rock fall to photograph the gash. While digging in my bag for my camera, I dropped the storm lantern which had lit my way. It was at that moment that I heard it. The pulse. Like the devil's heartbeat itself. While I stood there in the chilling darkness, my head began to spin, the throbbing poles began to change, a new sound filled my head. It was a song, a rhyme, over and over and over again. I could not locate the source of the sound, and groped about for the cave wolves. That was when the markings appeared from out of the gloom. The wolves were patterned with regular and uniform decoration. It throbbed in time with the sound, and I felt... What what did they felt? Okay, we had two photos of a tunnel and of a ghost I believe. So what now? How this is all. Yeah, yeah. But 
So a bit is beginning. Looking for journals, taking stuff. No, it's still not all. Okay, I'm bedazzled. To end this, something or what? Maybe now I can go. Hmm. I need to hold in mind in both games of very bad at some things. I've been here. All right. What? 
What are we doing here? After comparing my previous sketches of a new photographs, I made a start of discovery. The rock has grown, I'm sure of it. What do has such power? It is baffling. I believe there is a force, power at work in the island, perhaps even under the lighthouse itself, pushing from the bowels of the earth. My recent visit to the island was productive. I arrived under the cover of the darkness, so as not to be seen departing from the bar harbor. The lighthouse guided me across the sands, but each visit becomes more treacherous. Perhaps it would be better if I employed the services of someone younger and more adventurous than myself. It's quite pretty. Right. Now we should be all. Like for real. Finally. <laughs> hey. He's not the one stuck out there. Be brave, my James. Be brave. Yay. Both three men dwell upon the island to keep the lamp alight. As we steered under the lee, we caught no glimmering light. A passing ship at dawn had brought the news, and quickly we set sail to find out what strange thing might ail the keepers of the deep sea light. We found no sign in any place, and soon again stood face to face before the gaping door, and stole into the room once more as frightened children steal. I, though we hunted high and low, and hunted everywhere, of the three men's fate we found no trace of any kind in any place, but a door ajar, and an untouched meal, and an overtoppled chair. We seemed to stand for an endless while, though still no word was said. Three men alive upon the island, who thought of the three men. Better written text at some time. So yeah, treacherous waters, weak sands, where ships get lost and lose the cargo and whatnot. Now thank you. Strange ghost voice. I bet it one of those dead sailors. No, not sailors. Uh, lightkeepers? Lighthousekeepers? Ominous structure raises above the water, illuminating the distance with its lights. I like the perspective. It's curvy, like it should be.
Oh, did we really try to generate the power with winds? It's like 1912. And this thing moves in the opposite direction. Is this ghosts? Fetch rock, additional emergency lightning installed by Air Barrow and Sounds 1909. I guess the hero doesn't want to go in without lights. What? I'm not taking it. All right. This sounds like a generator. Sixty-four, I guess. A second. The idea is that this game should be played in darkness. Prime boiler, middle, right, left. Activate tabs, middle, bottom, top.
What is this song from the first game? Candle holders. Now, uh, some wires. That's about all right. I guess people always try to find a use for such places. Like sit where the kids pretend nobody sees them. Yeah, it's FRL Fairweather Workbox I can read it, it's just fair work weather, fair weather work. Yeah, I do think that second game had a lot of objects that you can look up and nothing just happens useful. Like first game maybe contained much more useful items, objects that you can interact with, and he's mostly just to look at things and feel 
how it was for those people who work here all those times. Part of Devon. I was asked to. Clean the stove, empty ash from the boiler, clean out uh, stairs to dock, farewell work, should weather fold out, bold out, restock the coil room with packed charcoal. Sweep and snop, shop, mop, sweep and mop the crew room, work last night dishes, prepare evening meal and begin cooking, check lamp for falters, for faults, test a log horn at 6 o'clock. Foghorn, I think, yes, foghorn. Stock list, four tins of barred beans, two tins of baked beans, five small crates of rice. One package of macaroni, Only one package. It's probably much, much less than four small crates of rice. Two bottles of oil, one rack of potatoes, two tomatoes, only two tomatoes, small rack of carrots, potted pears, two jars of gentleman radish, one jar of onion jam, one team of onion and tomato. Ch ch chutney, chutney, three Cornish pasties, one jar of peanuts, fuel for oil lamps and lighter. Is this decoration for a week? With some, I don't know how much it small crates. Maybe it's even for a month. However, two tomatoes. It's like nothing.
nuts nuts FRL Oh, it's... How everything is neatly packaged? Almost unbelievable. <laughs> Why am I hidden in this hidden apartment? Okay. No, d don't knock on the door, please. I am okay without your signs. I think with carrots, beans, and uh, onions, and something else. I had a big round thing of cheese. How do you call it? Round of cheese, maybe. It wasn't mentioned in the list. And if I play this game, I like expect something to happen right there. When it's set here, I was a little afraid. I expect anything to happen here now. I just wanted to hide there, away from anything that can happen. Is there anybody there? What do you want with Robert Shaw? I'm Benjamin Parker. Why are you here? 
The Marin sent me. The lamp is not lit. Drake is coming. Drake is coming up the stair. Drake can see you. Drake will take you. What is wrong with Drake? Where is he? Who is watching? One by one, up the stairs, he's coming for your soul. <laughs> Can I? No. What do you want with Robert Shaw? Why are you here? Sure, but I'm telling you to leave. <laughs> okay, whatever it is, it doesn't want me to be there. Maybe I should answer correctly. Let's try it again. What do you want with Robert Shaw? Why are you here? Drake is coming. Drake is coming up the stair. Drake can see you. Drake will take you. He's watching you. We tried as hard as we could. I barricaded the room, but it was too late. He was so strong. He was too strong. I tried to protect young James, but Drake was too strong. No, not Drake. The devil. A demon incarnate. Darkness in his eyes. His skin all aflame. From hell itself, he came forth and took my soul. So drunk Drake has gone mad and killed down to people here.
No. My dearest James, what you write has left me in a terminal speculation. Can it be true? Drake losing his mind. I have known Drake to be only the most kind, settled sort of gentleman, and yet your description of him as a hunted dangerous animal has led me to believe that some serious malady must afflict him. I can think of no immediate cause why he would change. Has there been any material change in his circumstances? You must seek immediate assistance. You are not experienced in such matters. I will speak with Robert de Myron at the earliest possible opportunity. His medical opinion must prove to be beneficial. I worry so much for you, my love. I will write again soon. Always yours, Beatrice. Oh, Beatrice, my love, this night thinks brings new terrors. The situation has become impossible. My mind cannot cope with the horrors that assault my mind. And now my eyes. Drake is possessed by the devil himself. I have seen him change before my very eyes. One minute he was as normal as you and I. And then, well, he changed. He lit up. As if a flame with some unearthly light from hell itself. Oh, it did terrify me. I do not know what to think anymore. I thought his madness was due to an un unclear mind or some trauma, but now I believe there are demons at work. Am I going mad? Do my eyes lie to me? I'm so afraid. I'm so alone. Robert and I were in the crew room, sipping, ripping, sipping an out stew in a a little attempt to provide some normality, we sat in silence and fought upon Drake, moaning to himself from the bowels of the lighthouse. The moaning stopped as suddenly as a fall of darkness on November evening. Suddenly is a fall of darkness on November evening. Huh. All was still cold and dark, when we heard the footsteps coming up the tower stairs, or lower, coming up the lower stairs. There was something about the pace of his footsteps that made us shiver so. Robert and I did dart from the room with all haste and made for the bedroom. Robert was faster than I was. He ran as if Lucifer himself were Glowing at his back. I was not so quick and turned to face Drake as if my mind were not my own. He was standing by the crew room. The light from the open doorway threw a ghostly hue over his green face. It was horrible to see. I stood transfixed for what seemed hours. I could not move. That's when it happened. Drake's face began to glow, then his hands. Eventually all his being was aglow with a blinding white light. I felt the brightness burning into my soul. He cried out for me to join it. When I heard a word, a name even, which was unfamiliar to me, Malachi. What could it mean? I must have passed out, for the next thing I knew, Robert was slapping my face and calling my name. I was propped up in bed and lulled most of the worst for... Where? It's not lulled, it's... Falling? Feeling? 
and feeling most of the worst for wear. A thoroughly wretched sensation, the main dresses was pushed up against the door as a barricade dresser. Robert must have acted fast. I feel I owe him my life. With time my mind cleared, and Robert and I began to make our plans. Speedy is due to make this week's delivery in the morning. We will signal him from the window and warn him of the danger. He can fetch help. He must help us. He may be our only hope in this. Wait, I can hear footsteps again. They are climbing the stairs. Oh lord, oh my love, I fear he will gain access. That light, that blinding light, is under the door. Then what is this doing here? We're on top of sheets. There were three men dwell in flanile to keep the lamp alight. As we stared, as we stayed under the lee, we caught no glimmer through the night. A passing ship at dawn had brought the news and quickly we set sail to find it what strange thing might ail the keepers of a deep sea light. Winter day broke blue and bright with glancing sun and glazing spray. While all the swell our boat made way as gallant as a gallant flight. But as we neared the lonely isle and looked up the naked height, and saw the lighthouse towering white with blinded lantern that all night had never shed a spark. And still to maze to speak, we landed and made fast the boat, and climbed the track in single file, each wishing he was safe afloat. On any sea, however far, so it be far from flood and isle, and still we seem to climb and climb as though we'd lost all count of time, and so must climb for evermore. Yet all too soon we reached the door, the black sun blistered lighthouse door. The cape for us ajar. Castor oil. Uh, far away. Telegraph. 
Manual Ghost Stories The Fetch of Fetch Rock It was a dark, stormy night when we found ourselves stranded upon Fetch Rock. The lighthouse had been a faithful guide and drew us onto the beach to the south of the island. Frederick and I were returning from weekend in Brittany when the storm chose to throw its might against us. Our small vessel was battered, tossed and thrown from swell to swell till I was sick to my stomach. Oh, we were relieved to see the light of the lamp gallery guiding us to safety. We made our way to the crew room where three kind souls provided soup and tea. Never had such a humble meal before. More welcome. Mean. More, being more welcome. The keepers were kind fellows, a little slow perhaps, but their concerns were genuine as any I had known. Even cynical old Frederick had to admit that he thought the man generous. They must not get many visitors out here on this ancient rock. I suppose that is why Frederick asked the question, a strange question. Why is it called Fetch Rock? The eldest of the keepers seemed to tremble, visibly, when the question was put to him, and he took a few moments to answer. Fetch be old English, sir, an old word for a ghost. There be places names we fetch in with them, like Fetchborough and Fetchhurst. We be haunted places, sir. I'd never heard of such a thing, but Frederick looked rather alarmed. I say, are you right, old man? I inquired. You look rather pale. It helps you caught a chill. Frederick nodded, but I could tell he was uncomfortable to answer honestly. Keeper, are you saying this island fetch rock is haunted? The old keeper took a moment to answer, as the time itself would save him, a reply. But eventually he said, Sir, once you've had your tea and the storm has eased, I suggest you leave this place and never come back. That rock is haunted, sir, by a force no man could ever understand. You see, it happens to be more than just a ghost. Oh, for real, that's the end. Oh, so whatever you click on, it's just to... Alright. Nautical Tales and Folklore Seedlitz powered powders. Ah, oh, through Orphan, the town where I came from. Rose House. Those weird photos of people are posing all the time. Hmm, a bottle?
Alright, I'm gonna do it today. Thank you for being here.